Yes. Welcome back to the Commissioner's Corner. Again, I'm your host, Scott Margo, joined by Karn, Dan, and Thomas, your three county commissioners. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, legislative session. So um, uh, this year, uh, legislative ses session begins at the state capitol on the 10th of January. Uh, we're taping on Monday the 8th, so in a couple of days from now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll regroup in February and see um, what kind of damage they may or may not have done by now uh, at that point. But uh, we're going to start off, Dan, you want to kick off, what's it like uh, since you've lived in the uh, legislature yeah. for a while? Yeah. Uh, what's it like when they kick it all off? Parties! Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> non-stop parties, non-stop receptions. No, I yeah, previously served in both the House and Senate, and whether you're a state rep or state senator, first of all, you can introduce five bills and there are deadlines in terms of when you're supposed to you know, introduce those bills. And so all the legislators have at least their three bills that are pre-filed yeah. right now, ready to go. And many of them are working on their other two bills. Um, not every legislator introduces five bills, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes more. Sometimes people, people get waivers if they're in leadership yeah. positions. Especially but, our representative, Millie yeah, Hamner. Yeah. If, if you're Millie Hamner on the Joint Budget Committee, you're introducing a lot of bills yeah. um, that are uh, have fiscal issues with that. Mm -hmm. um, legislative session goes uh, 120 days, and so starting Wednesday, it um, the clock ticks yep. and it just uh, it's busy. They're down there Monday through Friday with um, the votes normally in the morning, committee work in the afternoon, and. Our two elected um, uh, representatives for Summit County, we have Millie Hamner, who mm -hmm. is from Summit County, she's a state rep, and then we have State Senator Randy Baumgartner, mm -hmm. who um, lives in the uh, Grand County yep. area. So, um, so all three of us are really involved with Colorado Counties Incorporated, as well as uh, CCAT, uh, Colorado Counties Acting Together, so that's another organization that we're a part of that we really follow things that we like for Summit County, and sometimes we work hard to, to kill bills that will have a negative impact uh -huh. on Summit County, so. Yeah. And so, uh, talk a little bit, uh, I know that that we've got a couple of bills that, that we worked actively with Colorado Counties Inc. Mm -hmm. to get included, and then you've been very busy, Dan, with regards to health insurance and health care issues. So you want to talk about uh, some of the health care bills that are maybe likely to be introduced? Sure. Um, last, uh, well, a couple years ago, we, we saw a bill that did a study, did an analysis on if we hypothetically did one single geographical rating area for the state, where we happen to be in Region 9 for Summit County, um, what that would mean for premiums. Mm -hmm. if, if you typed in a zip code of Summit County versus Denver or Boulder or Mesa County. And so it's very likely we'll see a bill on that. Um, if that particular bill passed, we would see on, on average a 22.3% decrease in terms of premiums. Okay. And um, another proposal that we'll likely see is a reinsurance program. There are a few states that have put forward a reinsurance program, um, Alaska, Minnesota, and Oregon, all with great success. Alaska saw mm -hmm. premium decreases of 35% immediately oh, wow. across the board for people that are on the individual yeah. market. And that's really where we see the most challenge, people that are small business owners, <coughs> contractors that, that are not part of a you know government or um, larger entity mm -hmm. health pool. And so this reinsurance program, if it moved forward, would cost the state about $178 million. And there's talk that it, maybe it could be tacked on to premiums now for a surcharge that would cost about $7.98. But in return, in our region, we could see averages of 35% mm -hmm. decrease wow. and statewide 21% decrease. Mm -hmm. So we would see a, a more of a decrease because we're more out of whack with the rest of the mm -hmm. state. And so it's very promising uh, for that particular bill. We have a uh, Republican Kent Lambert. He's on the Joint Budget Committee from Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. And we have Representative um, uh, Kennedy from uh, J Jefferson County who happens to be a, a Democrat. So mm -hmm. bipartisan support on yeah. paper. So let's just trying to figure out you know, getting, getting buy-in from the insurance companies, mm -hmm. trying to get general fund money possibly too to help offset um, that $178 million. And plus you need a federal waiver, which is called a 1332 waiver, to make all this happen. So, Is this one of the things that came out of the, the health care commission that had been uh, put together to try and look at ways to make things more affordable? Yeah, th this, okay. this is one of the recommendations from the Colorado Commission on Affordable Health Care. And... Um, legislators are just kind of running with it right now. Yeah. This really, in my opinion, has the most legs mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at a single geographical rating area, you're kind of picking winners and losers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are areas in the front range that will clearly see uh, increase in premiums. Um, 
I would argue, you know, hey, the West Slope and <coughs> Summit County, we're subsidizing almost the budget in yeah. many ways when you look at tourism dollars and sure. so forth. But um, but there's there is great hope um, because yeah. this this particular reinsurance it be decreases for everyone. Good, good. So. Well, we'll look forward to seeing how that goes. Who knew healthcare was so complex? <laughs> <laughs> We've heard that. I think that's yeah. been stated on the show before. <laughs> uh, all right, Thomas, you want to talk about uh, uh, campfires? Yeah. So uh, you know, we had a fire here in Summit County last summer, and uh, that got a whole lot of people's attention. And uh, one of the things that we've had a lot of conversations with the Forest Service about is how we regulate you know, campfires. And one of the things that we discovered doing research last summer was that there's a very archaic law on the state books from the late 1800s, I believe, mm -hmm. that requires us to post 20 signs um, here in Summit County in order to be able to find somebody for leaving their campfire unattended and uh, that fine can be no more than twenty fifty dollars fifty dollars mm -hmm. yep. so and those 20 signs need to be positioned throughout the county at all the different border yeah. entries right. into Summit County ingress and egress yeah. everywhere yeah, yeah. so we uh, went down to CCI and said, we think that this law needs to be updated. <laughs> and so uh, thankfully, um, all of the other commissioners down there agreed with us and said, yeah, we need to update this law. So we're um, working with CCI and CCI is sponsoring the bill to ask the legislature to change the rules. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there's got to be something better than 20 signs positioned around your county to tell people about this. Um, at least I think so in yeah. the year 2018. <laughs> yeah, in this day and age, we find it hard to believe that people are actually going to read those signs right. as they drive into the right. community. Right, exactly. And in addition, uh, we think that um, if you leave a campfire unattended, when the fire risk is great, you probably should be fined something more than yeah. $50. Yeah. So yep. we've got that one. Yep. And uh, Karen, we've got another one related to speed limits. Yeah, this is another one of those, maybe it's not so archaic because it was uh, done back when there were cars. Uh, <laughs> there <were> still <laughs> <but> cars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are an arm of the state, so we're unable to do a lot of things that people ask us to do mm -hmm. because we don't have the kinds of authorities that towns do. Yeah. And towns can decide the speed limit that they want on a road and post that speed limit and enforce it. And in Summit County, because we're an arm of the state, we really don't have that authority. Um, and we do have a number of neighborhoods that have a lot of baby strollers and dogs and bicycles and people mm -hmm. wandering. Um, because that's what the neighborhood is like and that's what people expect and we have posted signs that aren't really enforceable of 20 miles an hour 25 miles an hour so we really only have the authority to post 30 miles an hour and we need to go to great lengths and great expense to justify changing it mm -hmm. so this would give us the flexibility to do what in theory we've already done but we can't enforce yeah. And what, again, a lot of people within those neighborhoods ask the county to do. And so, again, right now, short of a, uh, a very exhaustive tra traffic study and analysis, which oftentimes doesn't come up with the results that the neighborhood is looking for, uh, trying to provide some additional uh, flexibility and authority uh, to counties is what that legislation would do. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on Campfire. We'll keep an eye on all the health care legislation as well. And, uh, and I'm sure, again, when we come back in February, we'll talk some more about what progress has or hasn't been made on all of those yeah. issues. And, and I'm confident there will be other bills that will oh, be yeah. introduced that we'll support or oppose because historically we see about um, 700 bills yeah. you know, get introduced during the legislative session. So. Yeah. Yep. So stay informed, stay active uh, as uh, the session gets underway. And right. Scott doesn't yep. want me to talk about it, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, we, I'm hearing that the very first day of session, the aquatic nuisance species sticker will be <laughs> will be um, 
put out there and we think that this year it will go through. So last year it was connected with higher prices for hunting and fishing licenses and there was opposition to that. But I think that there is a lot of support and there are a lot of sponsors for this to just have a, an aquatic nuisance species stickers, sticker requirement when you register your boat so that we can have some money to deal with this and not have invasion of these species that have devastated lakes in so many other states. Huh, so, I've never yeah. heard you talk about that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one more example of how little control I had over what Another happens bill. on the show, <laughs> in my daily life, whatever it might be. So, all right, we're going to take a quick break because we're now several minutes over. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, and we'll come back and talk about uh, a couple of other interesting topics. <laughs> 